You've searched the forums, you've scoured through dozens of videos. Seems like there's multiple ways to wire up your 700R4 for TCC lockup. Which way is the right way? It all depends on which model 700R4 you have. Keep watching, I'll explain. Now as always, I put timestamps down in the description down below, so if you wanna skip any part of this video, you can jump right to what you're looking for. There's also a bunch of links down there to parts, to the handbook that I'm gonna describe. Also links to get a t-shirt, so go check that out down in the description down below. First, here's a brief definition on what TCC lockup is and how it works. TCC stands for Torque Converter Clutch. On the 700R4, the torque converter has a clutch inside of it that when a solenoid inside of your transmission gets an electric signal, it pushes the hydraulic fluid to lock out that clutch, which means your torque converter has zero slippage. Now, why would you want TCC lockup? Will your transmission still work without hooking up the TCC lockup? Yes, it will work. In fact, I've been driving the Black Widow here for a few years since I put this transmission in there and never hooked up the TCC lockup. But there are many benefits. One of them is when you're at cruising RPM and it hits fourth gear, it'll lock up the converter and it actually will lower your RPMs. It'll also give you better fuel economy and help your transmission run cooler, which will extend the life of your fluid and your transmission overall. So it's well worth hooking up the lockup system. Now, how that system works all depends on the model of your 700 R4. GM made several changes over the years. The solenoid inside it changed as well as the wiring. Why they did that? Mm -hmm. Here's how to figure out which model you have. Locate the serial number stamped in the case on the passenger side. The first digit in that serial number is the year. So mine is a six, which means my transmission is a 1986. And then depending on the year, you may have two letters or you may have three letters. Mine has three because it's an 86. Those three letters are the model number. There's a great resource online by the Automatic Transmission Service Group. It's called the 700R4 Update Handbook. I'll put a link to it down in the description down there, or you can just Google search 700R4 Update Handbook. It's about 120 pages long, but it contains all of the information you need for all of the different models of 700R4 throughout every single year. And then you can use this handbook along with your model number to look up what wiring type you have for your solenoid so you know how to connect it to engage the lockup. So essentially it boils down to how your particular solenoid is wired. You'll either have one wire going to it or two wires. And they're all connected to a bunch of various pressure switches. If you have a two wire solenoid, you have the option of either mounting an external pressure switch to the fourth gear port, which is located on the passenger side right behind the governor servo. Or you can go into your transmission by dropping the pan and rewire it internally but if you have a one wire solenoid like I do, you're pretty much limited to internally wiring it, which means dropping the pan. However you choose to wire it, you're gonna to wanna to test your solenoid first to make sure it actually works because if you wire it up and the solenoid doesn't work, it's not gonna work. So here's how to test it if you have a two wire solenoid. Go to the four pin connector that's on the driver's side of your transmission and locate the wires that are in the A and the B ports on your connector. The wire in port A is a 12 volt power source and the wire in port B is your ground. If you've got one in C or D, it won't matter for this test. We're just looking for A and B. So once you ground the wire in port B, you can tap the wire in port A to a 12 volt source. You should hear a faint clicking sound. You gotta listen carefully because that solenoid's up in your transmission. If you hear a clicking sound, your solenoid is good. If you don't hear a clicking sound and you're sure you've got a two wire set up, your solenoid is likely bad and you've got to drop the pan and replace the solenoid, in which case you may consider wiring it from the inside. However, this test won't work if you've got a one wire solenoid and it was all because of how it was connected 
both externally and internally. Since my transmission was already pulled when I got it, there was wiring there, but it's all been disconnected and some of them were cut. And I don't even know if it's any good. I don't have the vacuum port for it. And looking online, they're like 60 or 70 bucks. So it's kind of worth it for me just to go ahead and buy a two wire solenoid and then to just wire it up accordingly. And that'll save me a little money and I know it'll actually work. So the solenoid is right here up towards the front of the transmission towards the bell housing. And it's just held in there by two 10 millimeter bolts. Once the solenoid is removed, go ahead and remove all of the wiring from all the other switches. So this is the solenoid. As you can see, it's a one wire solenoid. It's got all kinds of pressure switches and temperature switches and a bunch of crap that we don't need. This is the new one from TCI. All we need to do is ground the black one and get power to the red one. Wouldn't hurt to rub a little transmission fluid on the O-ring just to make sure it slides in a little easier. And we're just gonna ground this using a bolt. So looking at the back of the transmission now, next to the passenger side, there's a solenoid here. This pressure switch right here, this one is your fourth gear pressure switch. If it's got two prongs, you can reuse it, but if it's only got one prong, you're gonna wanna replace it with a two prong. So since we've got a two pole deal here, all we gotta do is wire up our solenoid to one pole of our pressure switch, go out the other side to the A terminal, and then wire that up and we're good. So I'm gonna take the old wiring that I stripped down to have just the one wire in it still. I'm gonna kinda of put this back in place, sorta of, kinda of like so. And there it is, simple. Just reuse the wiring that I already had, pressure switch that I already had, new TCI two wire lockout solenoid. Now I just got the one wire in port number A that I need to energize with some power and I'm good to go. All right, now we can de-pin our plug. We're just gonna use this green wire. To de-pin these, you gotta take this back cover off, which there's two clips, one on either side. Then we'll just select the right size de-pinning tool. This one happens to be a circle. Don't know what size it is. It's black. And the idea is this tube will compress whatever pins are holding these things in there. As you push them through, boom, it just pops right out. And boom, pops right out. So now to keep this watertight, we gotta put some hot glue in there to seal it up. Just make sure it's clean, because hot glue won't stick to dirt. Reinstall this little cover deal. Now we can take the wires out of the loom, just like so. All right, now that our fluids are topped off, now it's time to get to the wiring, and this is where we're gonna hook up the relay. And the basic concept of the relay is it gets power through terminal 30. You've got a through line from 86 to 85. One is a trigger wire, one's a ground wire, depending on how you wire it up. And then you've got 87 and 87A. The relay is always on 87A until it gets tripped through terminal 86, then it flips over to 87. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wire up a keyed 12 volt source to input 30. We're gonna ground it to 85. We're gonna run the brake light switch to 86, torque converter to 87A, and then the brake lights to 87. I'm also going to install a toggle switch so I have the ability to turn it on and off in certain driving situations. So if this all works out the way I'm thinking it will, the torque converter is always gonna be ready to be locked out. Once it gets to fourth gear and it senses that pressure in fourth gear, it'll lock out the solenoid, lock in the torque converter. And then once I hit the brakes, it flips it from the torque converter to 87, and now I've got brake lights and the torque converter's off, so when I'm sitting there holding the brakes at a stop sign or something, it won't stall, hypothetically. Hopefully, cross our fingers, knock on wood. Let's try it. What's the worst that could happen? All right, I got it all wired up the way I think it should be wired up according to my diagram, and I'm crossing my fingers hoping it's all gonna work. So, when I turn the key on, this little LED light on this toggle switch should light up. So let's see what happens. Boom! There you go. So it lights up, and then if I shut it off, it goes away. So I have this wired up so that my brake switch is now turning on and off the torque converter. So let's see what happens when I hit the brakes. Off. 
Release the brake, comes back on. Perfect. Let's see if we still have brake lights. Sweet, we still got brake lights. So let me wrap up this wiring and then let's go for a test drive. So as you can see, running down the road about 60, 65, we're now running about 1700 to 1800 RPM. And when I switch off the toggle switch, you see the RPMs boost back up to about 1900, 2000, somewhere in there. So the torque converter lockup's working. And now my transmission is gonna be a lot happier, especially on the long drives. Anyway, I hope this helped you out. If it did, hit that like button down there. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down there. And as always, check out the social medias, comment, share, check out the t-shirts over here, and I'll see you on the next one.